while Boeing's Starliner crew deals with the fallout from a rough test flight, SpaceX astronauts are literally riding high. On Friday, SpaceX's groundbreaking Fram 2 mission splashed down safely, setting new records, exploring uncharted orbits, and quietly rewriting the playbook for human spaceflight. It wasn't just a win for SpaceX, it was a bold leap forward for commercial exploration. So what made this mission so historic? And why is everyone talking about it? Let's break it all down right here in today's episode of TechMap. At exactly 12.19 p.m. on Friday, April 4th, a SpaceX Dragon capsule made a historic splashdown off the coast of California concluding a groundbreaking journey. This wasn't your average mission. For four intense days, four international astronauts soared around Earth, not just in orbit, but passing over both the North and South Poles. This ambitious adventure, dubbed Fram 2, marks the first time humans have ever completed such a polar orbit. And guess who led this history-making mission? Cryptocurrency billionaire Chun Wang, who not only bankrolled the project, but also took part in the flight himself. He was joined by an inspiring trio of first-time space explorers. Norwegian filmmaker Janneke Mikkelsen, German robotics expert Rabea Roga, and Australian polar adventurer Eric Phillips. None had ever been to space before. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk didn't miss the moment, tweeting, Congrats, SpaceX Dragon Team! The mission took off Monday night from Florida, riding a Falcon 9 rocket into space. Once detached, the Dragon spacecraft cruised solo, darting from pole to pole using its onboard thrusters. And talk about milestones, this was SpaceX's 50th Dragon flight. Plus, it marks a series of impressive spaceflight firsts. For the first time, a SpaceX private mission has no U.S. astronauts, the first ever crewed polar orbit the first X-ray of a human taken in space, and SpaceX's first Crew Dragon recovery off the California coast. The official return of recovery ops to the West Coast, a strategic shift from Florida to cut down on space debris re-entry risks. The recent Crew-9 splashdown was the last one off Florida's shores. To be honest, this coast-to-coast -coast operation is no small feat, Moving recovery vessels like the MV Shannon from Florida to California costs a fortune in fuel and logistics. Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, shared his appreciation. It took a massive amount of work to move Dragon 2 recovery operations from Florida to California. A huge shout to the SpaceX recovery and space operations team for executing this first time operation safely, reliably, and with precision. Lastly, a big thank you to our partners FAA News, USCG, and NASA for their partnership on our cross-country move. Safely splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, SpaceX's Dragon recovery vessel. Shannon recovered the spacecraft and hoisted it onto the ship's deck off the coast of Oceanside, California. The Fram 2 crew remained strapped into their seats aboard Resilience awaiting SpaceX recovery teams opening the hatch. Then, unlike most astronaut landings, the Fram 2 crew exited their spacecraft unassisted, continuing research on the effects of microgravity on the human body. This test, according to SpaceX, was to characterize the ability of astronauts to perform unassisted functional tasks after short and long durations in space. The crew's ability to go from that zero-gravity environment back to normal gravity here on Earth, all while wearing a SpaceX's 35-pound, 16-kilogram spacesuit, can help anticipate astronauts' abilities when arriving to explore places like the Moon and Mars. Elon chimed in again. Welcome home. Those breakthroughs came just months after Polaris Dawn featured the company's first extravehicular activity. EVA. Step by step, SpaceX is moving beyond its established playbook, experimenting with bold new mission profiles and reshaping what we expect from private space exploration. The momentum, unmistakably promising. Throughout their three to five day journey, the Fram 2 crew took full advantage of Dragon's panoramic cupola, gazing down at Earth's polar regions 
from an altitude of 425 to 450 kilometers, about 249 to 264 miles. Working alongside space physicists and citizen scientists, they studied strange and beautiful light phenomena in the upper atmosphere, glowing green fragments and soft mauve ribbons resembling auroras. Among the most intriguing sights were emissions similar to a rare phenomenon known as STEVE, strong thermal emission velocity enhancement, typically observed between 400 and 500 kilometers, 249 to 311 miles above Earth. These shimmering bands offered not just visual wonder but valuable scientific data. But the mission wasn't all sightseeing. The crew also conducted cutting-edge research into how spaceflight impacts the human body. One major milestone, they aimed to capture the first-ever X-ray of a human in space, a groundbreaking moment in space medicine. FRAM-2 wasn't just about new perspectives, but new orbits too. The team flew in a bold 90-degree circular orbit, far steeper than the more common 51.6-degree angle used in previous missions. This rare trajectory allowed them to cross both poles, creating opportunities for unique studies. One particularly imaginative experiment involved growing mushrooms in microgravity, an early test for using fungi as a sustainable food source on future deep space missions, especially those targeting Mars. To make the mission more interactive, FRAM-2 also launched the FRAM-2 HAM competition inviting amateur radio operators around the world to decode images transmitted from space. It was a fun and educational way to involve the public in real-time space exploration. Mission Commander Chun Wang shared his enthusiasm for exploring the polar regions from orbit, expressing hope that their stunning imagery would spark new insights into the planet we call home. Dr. Christopher Combs the Associate Dean of Research at the Klesa College of Engineering and Integrated Design at the University of Texas at San Antonio, described the mission as a notch above a gimmick, but not exactly a groundbreaking milestone, with the planned experiments described as offering limited scientific value and able to be conducted regardless of the flight path. Indeed, none of the 22 life science experiments aboard FRAM-2 actually required the spacecraft to enter a polar orbit. This type of trajectory hadn't been attempted in past crewed missions, largely due to the significant amount of fuel it demands. While most missions launch eastward to take advantage of Earth's rotation and conserve fuel, FRAM-2 launched southward, an unusual move that offered no clear scientific or technical benefit. So why do it? Honestly, it seems the decision boiled down to the allure of doing something different. There wasn't a compelling mission-critical reason for choosing a polar path, aside from perhaps the novelty and spectacle of being the first. That said, the achievement is still incredibly impressive. Getting a crewed spacecraft into a polar orbit is no small feat. And SpaceX didn't just accomplish that. It also had enough fuel left over to land the Falcon 9 booster, back on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, with stunning precision. But the spotlight on FRAM-2's polar route kind of distracts from what might be the bigger story here. How routine private spaceflight is starting to feel. What was once pure science fiction is quickly becoming a new reality, almost ordinary, yet still utterly extraordinary. Initially, Crew Dragon Endurance was selected for this flight because it shares its name with Ernest Shackleton's Antarctic Exploration Vessel. Due to changes in the Crew Dragon Manifest, however, Endurance was assigned to Crew 10, and it was decided to fly FRAM-2 using resilience. Can't help but be in awe of SpaceX's FRAM-2, the next giant leap in space exploration. Drop your thoughts below. Joy upon joy. On the very same day the FRAM-2 mission returned home, a major announcement lit up the aerospace world. SpaceX, ULA, and Blue Origin have been awarded a staggering $13.7 billion in U.S. military launch contracts through 2029. Unveiled on April 4th by the U.S. Space Force's Space Systems Command, the contracts are part of the National Security Space Launch, NSSL, Phase 3 
Lane 2 initiative, an essential program aimed at securing the Pentagon's access to space for its most sensitive and high-stakes missions. SpaceX landed the largest share with $5.9 billion, followed by United Launch Alliance, ULA, at nearly $5.4 billion, and Blue Origin with $2.4 billion. In total, the three space giants are expected to conduct 54 missions between the fiscal years 2025 and 2029. This is a strategic investment in assured access to space, said General Chance Saltzman, Chief of Space Operations for the U.S. Space Force. A robust and resilient space launch architecture is the foundation of both our economic prosperity and our national security. Breaking it down, SpaceX will handle about 28 missions, roughly 60%. ULA will take on 19 launches, roughly 35%. Blue Origin, though still awaiting certification for its new Glenn rocket, is set for seven missions, pending approval. The Lane 2 portion of the Phase 3 program focuses on complex launches to high-energy orbits with enhanced mission assurance requirements, such as secure communications and missile warning systems, making it the most demanding category of national security launch assignments. Missions are typically assigned two years ahead of their scheduled launches. Flights under these new contracts are expected to take place from the fiscal year 2027 through 2032. Blue Origin's inclusion is particularly noteworthy. This marks the first time three providers have been selected to handle these critical government payloads. Even though New Glenn has flown only once and hasn't yet been certified, the Space Force is betting big on its future potential, showing confidence that the rocket will be mission-ready in time. Meanwhile, ULA, a collaboration between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, recently crossed a huge milestone with the long-awaited certification of its Vulcan rocket on March 26. That rocket is now cleared to begin flying NSSL Phase II missions later this year. In short, April 4 wasn't just a win for FRAM-2, it was a full-blown power move for U.S. space dominance. The Phase III acquisition strategy is split into two lanes. Lane 1 is geared toward less risk-averse, commercial-like missions and includes about 30 launches. Lane 2 targets high-stakes missions that demand elevated performance and security standards. These contracts ensure continued access to this vital domain, said Major General. Stephen Purdy, Acting Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Space Acquisition and Integration. Under the contract, all three companies will be required to meet stringent mission assurance standards including joint integration efforts with government teams to safeguard mission success. The launch providers will be assigned missions on an annual basis, with the first round of fiscal 2025 mission awards to be announced later this year. Assignments will continue annually, each October through the end of the contract period. The Phase Three contracts build on the Pentagon's efforts to eliminate dependence on Russian-made AR-D-180 engines and to foster a competitive U.S. launch market capable of meeting national security agencies' evolving space requirements.